What are the basic principles of stratigraphy? Let's start with the principle of uniformitarism. This was defined by James Hutton in the 19th century, and it's often referred to as the present is the key to the past. In other words, the principles that apply today in modern sedimentary system are still applicable in the deep past, so we can understand processes in the deep past by looking at modern principles. And that is one of the key principles in stratigraphy, but it is not the only principle. A key figure for stratigraphy, perhaps an unlikely figure, is actually an ecclesiastic from Italy who lived in the 17th century, and his name is Nicola Steno. Steno came up with three principles that are still applicable today in stratigraphy. Steno's first principle is known as the principle of superposition, and I've already mentioned this earlier in this class. It's to basically recognize that because sediments were deposited in the ocean on a flat surface, the layers that are below are older than the layers that are above. Now, this sounds pretty simple for 21st century geologists, but in the 17th century, this was a revolution, and Nicolas Steno introduced that um, principle. And we can look at this principle here in the Dolomites, which is the region where Nicolas Steno lived. And the Dolomites are Triassic in age, they're limestone deposited in the Triassic. And just by looking at the layers, we can already know where the older strata are and where the younger strata are. And this is really the only thing we can do with little stratigraphy to determine time or an age. Steno's second principle is the principle of original horizontality. He recognized that these were marine strata, marine sediments, that were deposited at a very low angle, maybe one, two degree, in his mind, probably flat. And in the field, it looks like this. This is a picture I took in Oman. You can see it's a, a beautiful anticline, actually. It's a salt core anticline here in uh, Jebel Salak. And the principle of Steno's um, law is that even though these layers are now tilted, the top can still be recognized, and we can still recognize the fact that these were deposited flat. And we know today that tectonic is the main mechanism by which these layers are being upturned. And then finally, Steno's third principle is the principle of original lateral continuity. By this, he means that when the layers were deposited, they were continuous laterally. You could follow them to the edge of the basin. But today, if you look at modern sediments, they are, of course, cut by valley, cut by rivers, and they no longer can be traced. But Nicolas Steno recognized that this was a feature of the modern landscape. And so by extension, he introduced the notion that we could do correlation, that we could actually trace rocks in space, if not in time. Now, that principle of lateral continuity, of course, has its limitations. There is a point where the layers will stop to continue laterally. We know that layers are not infinite in space. They will, for instance, stop at the edge of the basin, at the very least, or they may pinch out, or just you may not have enough sediments to fill the entire accommodation. So we can recognize multiple types of different terminations. We can have either pinch out, where the layers are essentially terminating uh, by a, a pinch out geometry, we can have inter-tonguing, inter where different sediments are mixed together as small tongs of each of the different types of um, sediments. Or we can also have lateral gradation, where the sediment essentially grade from one type of sediment to another type of sediment. For instance, sand becoming progressively more rich in clay, and eventually we deposit a clay stone. Here's an example of intertonguing in Texas, this is the Permian Basin, and what you see here is different members of uh, a limestone slash clastic 
type of deposit. So we have the Lamar member, which is the slope of a carbonate platform here. And below we have the Cherry Canyon Tong, which is deeper clastic sands. And you can see very clearly here that these two lithologies, these two members are intertonguing at a relatively small scale at the outcrop. You're looking at maybe 60 meters of uh, deposits. In the subsurface, this is also visible, and you have here an example of how those sands come from the basin and are mixed with the slope carbonates. And immediately you can see the value here of trying to understand the distribution of sand and carbonates if you're interested, for instance, in finding water, oil, or other resources. You can see that the subsurface is more complicated than simply a nice layer cake type of stratigraphy. So that are so these are the three principle from Nicola Steno, but these are not the only principle or laws of stratigraphy. Another very important law is the principle of cross-cutting relationship, which you must already be familiar, familiar with. This principle simply states that something that cross-cuts a fabric must be younger than that fabric. So in this case, I'm showing you a dike on the left and a fold on the right, and both the dike and the fold must be younger than the host rock that contains them, and that is common sense. Another very important principle is the principle of inclusion, which states that any rock or feature that is included in a lithology must be younger than the bed in which it's deposited.